novel is really two stories that run in parallel with each other and eventually meet up when all the secrets are revealed. Um, the, it starts with the young boy, Tommy, aged eight, going off to boarding school. He's a very vulnerable little chap. His parents are very old and don't show him much love. He has this heroine of an older sister who he absolutely adores. And when he gets sent away to boarding school, it's a, it's a big shock for him. It's away from his home. He feels very much on his own. It's a brutal place, the, full of bullies. And the only way he can escape from this is into his own fantasy world of cowboys and Indians, which is how I was as a kid. I always played cowboys and Indians. Then the second story, the one that runs parallel with this, is Tom as an adult. He's living on his own in Montana, in Missoula, Montana. He's a fairly lonely and rather blighted character. He was married, he's divorced now, he's estranged from his only son who, very much against his wishes, has become a US Marine like his stepfather and is in Iraq fighting the war. His son, Danny, gets charged with a murder in Iraq and it's because of this that Tom and Danny start to make gradual steps towards refinding each other. There are four main characters in the book. There's Tommy as a boy, who we first meet when he's about eight years old. Then there's Diane, his sister, who's an actress, an up-and-coming uh, movie star. She's impetuous, very beautiful, very talented. She's a big star in England and she's just getting a break in, in Hollywood. Um, she has a big secret that I won't divulge now, but it's a secret that changes everything about the way Tommy sees his life. So when Diane goes to Hollywood, she meets the third main character of the book, Ray Montaigne. He's a kind of washed up TV cowboy star. He has a series called Slip Rock, which the young Tommy absolutely adores. But the reality is, is that, um, that Ray's career is on the slide. Um, he seems pretty good news when they first meet him, but gradually we start to find out there's a darker side to Ray, which soon swamps all of their lives. The fourth character is Cal Matheson, who's a wrangler and, and Ray's movie stunt double. He does all the dangerous things in Ray's TV series that Ray isn't able or doesn't dare to do. He's a real guy. He's a half Blackfeet Indian and fairly soon he becomes a focus not just of Tommy's hero worship but of Diane's attention too. I started to think one evening when I was watching the news there was this footage of George Bush down on his ranch in Texas and he was wearing a Stetson and a pair of cowboy boots and he was sort of walking along in cowboy fashion, really the old American hero. I suddenly thought there was a story to be told here about a young boy who's into cowboys and Indians in a big way and how that informs his notions of bravery and, um, and heroism. In the 1950s, everything on TV seemed to be cowboys and Indians. I mean, some of them were pretty primitive programs. If you look at them now, they don't stand up. It's, they were all shot in three days and everybody's talking the whole time. There's very little action. But I loved them. And uh, what I was interested in is tracing the way in which the myth feeds through childish eyes into a man's eyes. You know, some of the soldiers who fight in Iraq who have such a terrible time and go through such shocking ordeals have grown up believing the, the myth of the West and it doesn't mean that they're doing anything less good but it just probably informs their notions of bravery and of violence and of attitudes to other ethnic groups I think. Well I started the book about f five years ago and then um, stopped about halfway through because I, I at some wild mushrooms that were poisoned and it uh, very nearly killed me. It, it took quite a long time to recover from that and the last thing on earth I felt able to do during that couple of years was to finish the book. So it just lay there unfinished. Um, my American publishers sent me a jacket of the book, a proposed jacket, and it was so beautiful. 
it was wrapped around somebody else's book and I thought, damn it, I want my book to be in there. So I opened up the computer and I got back down to work and, um, and found that the journey that I'd been on really informed my new vision of the book. And I suppose it kind of stripped a layer off me in a way. I mean, I've always felt when I'm writing that I'm very much in the heads and the hearts of my characters. But in this case, when I went back to the book, I, I, I suppose my sense of empathy with them was heightened. And I became acutely aware of how vulnerable and how precious life is. So I suppose in a way I channeled all that into the book and um, it was quite a cathartic experience. Mm -hmm.